All right, the time has finally come for me to admit my great shame, my greatest regret. Now I haven't clickbaited you, by the way, I'm quite sincere in everything I'm about to say. Now first and foremost I will say the following, that if you aren't aware of the gravity of the situation, the situation European civilization finds itself in, this video will not make any sense at all, but I can only suppose that in the current year, the year of enlightenment 2024, most of you, if not all of you, you are aware of the situation, perhaps you've seen the decline firsthand, perhaps you were blissfully unaware, back 10 years ago even, this is my 10 years anniversary video by the way, 10 years ago I made my first political video, a passionate rant against feminism. Now of course I've come a long way during these 10 years, but even so I have I have swallowed my ego. Usually I joke about being humble, but I'm actually quite humble in saying that it's it's a bit hard to look at your life's work and see that you have missed the the fundamental thing. So I'll get into it in uh, yeah, we'll get into it. I'll get straight into it so you know why what I'm talking about. So I have been at it for 10 years. I have, I don't regret anything I've said or done. Perhaps a few minor positions I've changed my mind on, but nothing major. And I'm very happy and proud of everything I've done. Now, what the regret, the great regret I have, what I'm a bit ashamed of is that I missed the absolutely most important thing. And that is to, I will explain at length, but to just summarize it quickly, the the main thing I should have said of course hard for me to know 10 years ago I've grown a bit over this decade for sure but uh, maybe I should have known it is what it is what I should have said simply put is what I should have done what I should have said what I should have emphasized from the beginning was to get our guys into institutions of power positions of power political parties Again, I don't regret any of the good advice I've given. If I want to praise myself, I can say, yeah, I get messages all the time from guys saying how I've bettered their lives in um, all all kinds of ways. And of course, I am very happy and proud of the part I've taken in pushing the metapolitical Oton window, resculpting the metapolitical landscape, especially here in Sweden. We've had, you know, 10 years ago, if you said that you you might even hint that there might be an issue with mass immigration from the third world. You were seen as a as a demon. Now you can say it in a polite conversation. You can say that, you know, I, I believe remigration is the correct path forward. It's not even controversial anymore. You can say that you vote for the Sweden Democrats and many people will say, oh, okay, that's, uh, that's fine. I understand your position. Ten years ago, you could not have done this. So I am I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be humble. I'm saying that I'm very proud of everything I've done. I'm very proud of all of the hit pieces, all of the hits, all of the tribulations I've been through. And I've been through these tribulations because I have pushed, I have been unwavering in my position for European civilization. So again, very happy with that. It's just I wish I had at an earlier time, especially when I shown the brightest, maybe in 2018, I would have said, I would have really pushed this when I could reach out to the most young guys. I would have said, you know what, go into political parties, work your way up, instead of focusing only on, you know, gym, MMA, reading, finding a good woman. Again, this is all good advice. I don't regret myself in the list. You should train, you should train MMA, you should find a good wife, you should have children, you should read all of these things. It's good advice. It's just, it haunts me extremely much that I missed the most fundamental aspect of saving European civilization. Now, of course, back 10 years ago, when I was a sensitive young man of 25, yeah, of course, I had a different perspective on things. Now I am a venerable ancient, 35 years, I have two children, and I feel the, the clock is ticking. The time has come to take things a bit more seriously, and this is the correct analysis, to go in, to engage in society. You might have heard otherwise good guys, and I know guys I respect greatly myself. They say the solution isn't political, and yeah, believe you me, I wish that were true. I wish the struggle was cultural or spiritual or anything like that, but it is not. It is not. The struggle is very much political, and you can fantasize about, you know, as I do every once in a while, I'm gonna move to a, a nice villa in the countryside, I'm gonna sit in the sun, sipping coffee, reading poetry, writing poetry, 
but yeah, guess what? It's it's a dream. It's a it's an escapist fantasy because ultimately, as long as our enemies are in these positions of power, they can just send police to my house and arrest me because I've said something they don't agree with. So you can't escape. Same thing if you are fantasizing about making enough money so you don't need to engage with society at all. It's a fantasy. They will come for you. It doesn't matter how much money you make. Look at the Bolshevik revolution. It didn't go particularly well for the guys with money. You will be first in line. They will come for you. There is no escape. The only escape is to go through to engage in the fight for these positions of power. They, the current regimes of the West, they have pushed you into a position where the only thing you can do is to fight. And with fight, I don't mean, you know, brawling in the street. Uh, I don't mean any physical fight. This battle in front of us, it's not violent at all. If you if you talk about violence, if you fantasize about a civil war or a revolution or, you know, street battles, it's also an escapist fantasy because then you can say to yourself, you know what, when the um, when the civil war kicks off, then I'm gonna be so tough and brave and everything like that. I'm gonna be so committed and I don't doubt your toughness. I don't doubt the toughness of my white brothers in the list. I, I know your fortitude because I know our ancestors, but I doubt your insight here. I doubt your commitment to something serious. If you fantasize about it, if you talk about it, it, it's an escapist fantasy and if you talk about violence, yeah, the, the security service, they will have an easy target in you. They will just come and pick you up and they they want you to be violent because then you will give them a clear target. What they don't want you to do is to go in to all of these parties to keep your cool, to keep your guard up, to keep your discipline. They don't want you to do it because that makes them afraid. You can look at these violent riots in England and again, I am as angry as any Englishman. When I look at these young English guys or English girls, I see they look like me, they act like me, they are of the same blood as I am. Of course I get angry, it's just the difference is I don't encourage anyone going out on the street to throw a rock at a police uh, and you will feel cool with yourself, you will have ventilated some anger. The, um, the police, yeah, of course they might not find it so fun to get a rock in their head, but the politicians, they will just laugh at you because there's no threat there. They aren't afraid, it's like a child throwing a tantrum and you will be put in prison. There is absolutely no reason to do this. If you're serious about change, if you're serious about wanting to escape from this nightmare, if you're serious about wanting to create a society where you're not afraid of, you know, will, will it be your grandmother who's next, who's gonna be stabbed by the diversity? Will it be your daughter that is harassed by diversity? I want to create a society where I don't need to escort my daughters everywhere, where I don't need to escort my wife everywhere. We had this in Sweden up until 20 years ago and then the Multicultural Health Project uh, started and yeah, it's a different society. It's a different society. Sweden is a completely different country from when I grew up. I'm born in 89 by the way. And now something else you need to keep in mind is that these boomers in the positions of power, they are anti-white because they have grown up with a worldview, with a moral framework saying that the best you can do, the most moral you can be is to bring in as many of these oppressed non-whites as possible and care for them. Now your worldview, your ideology, and by the way we need to get rid of ideology. I don't care about your ideology. I couldn't care less about what you think of capitalism or socialism or taxation or personal liberties. The only thing that matters is to recognize that politics is a game of power and the only thing that matters is to get our guys, guys loyal to order, reason, European civilization, to get these guys into positions of power. And this is also something that, again, I'm a bit ashamed since I missed this. We can win 100% in the metapolitical arena, which we are, by the way, we're winning big time. You can just look at X now, see how um, see how much engagement you know critical voices get when we're talking about uh, these controversial topics that were extremely controversial 10 years ago. It's a completely different landscape. But here's the thing, here's the brutal demoralizing truth is that we can be all as red-pilled as possible. All of the population in all of the West can be super red-pilled and be completely on board with everything. Now unless we have our guys in these positions of power then nothing will change. So that is the brutal reality. So you can't expect anyone else to do the job for you. And I will say the following. I'm still too controversial to go into politics. 
had I been able to go into politics, I would have done it. I would have sat through all of these boring political meetings. I would have humbly submitted myself to a lot of extra work. And believe you me, I promise that when the day comes when I can actually do it, when we've pushed the Overton window to the extent where I'm not no longer controversial, then I will go into politics. Definitely, I will do so. It's the only reasonable course of action. Until then, I humbly ask all of you sensitive young men to do it. And, you know, a few years ago, perhaps I didn't have the confidence to ask this of you. Perhaps I didn't want to do it because I hadn't done it myself. And uh, yeah, I will say that I've had a, a very exciting and fun life. I've been able to do whatever I have wanted for a very long time. And it's liberating in a way. So I'm asking you to be disciplined in a way that I haven't been because my role is something different and I believe myself to be a very disciplined man and now I'm asking you dear young man to be even more disciplined I want you to not speak your mind and by the way I'm talking to maybe 0.1% of you when I say this most of you you've already you know embarked upon your life's path and I'm not saying t for you to stray from that path if you're in a good position but I'm saying this to any young man if you haven't decided yet or even an older man if you have the opportunity to go into politics do so so that you can humbly bide your time until you are in a good position where you can actually implement change and then you might say oh why does it matter if we have one guy here but the thing is that we don't only have one guy we have a hundred guys over all political parties and now we get into the a common topic of controversy as well saying does voting work Yes, of course, you should go to vote, definitely, uh, absolutely, uh, there is no reason to not vote, but the main point here is that ultimately it doesn't really care whom, for what party people vote for, because ultimately if you look at a good vision of the future in 10 years or even 5 years, all of these political parties, they should be full to the brim of our guys, and it doesn't matter if you agree with their ideological background. Again, I couldn't care less what you think about the social democratic ideological history or anything like that. We need to stop looking at politics as some sort of static game of ideology. It's a game of power and it's about who wields the levers of power. That's the only thing that matters. So you might say, oh, I don't want to go into this party because 10 years ago they were open borders fanatics. Yeah, it's true. The moderates in Sweden, for example, they have been this way for the last 20 years. They weren't this way 50 years ago. And this is also my point. No one voted for the uh, the mass immigration into Sweden. It was, a, it was a change that happened in all of the political parties due to many different factors, of course. But the point is that you can bring back these parties to, um, to a more sound attitude to their own population so and this by the way if we're looking at an enlightened mind versus an unenlightened mind what is an unenlightened mind yes this is someone who looks at something and says this is bad now an enlightened person is someone who looks at something and says it is not what it is imagine what it could be so use your god-given power of imagination and envision what it could be. Same thing if we're talking about the EU. This video is not about the EU, but I'm just saying that uh, an unenlightened mind will look at the EU and say, oh, it's so bad, everything is so hopeless, the, it's full of anti-white boomers, everything like that, it's so bad. An enlightened mind, who can use his God-given powers of imagination, can look at the EU and say, imagine what it could have been, imagine what it could be if we get all over Europe all over Europe we have our guys in Brussels yeah imagine what it could be same thing on a national level yes right now the social democrats in Sweden it's full of anti-whites yeah but what is stopping you what is stopping a hundred young patriotic men with good discipline to go into the social democrats to push it in a patriotic direction what is stopping you in Denmark, Poland, Ireland, whichever country we're talking about, nothing is stopping you from going into a political party. You don't need to agree with how it looks right now because you can change it from the inside. You can bring it back to how it was. And I'm not saying that you should do anything revolutionary here. It's just a matter of bringing back these parties to how they were a few decades ago. So we're talking about politics, we're talking about voting. Voting is not the main issue. People can vote for whatever party they want as long as we have our guys in all of these parties. A hundred young Irishmen. We can talk about Ireland because I suppose I have a good few Irish lads listening to this. We have Ireland. You can go out protesting 
every week you can make a big fuss, you can protest. I, it's good that you protest, don't get me wrong, but if you truly want something to change, yeah, then you have a hundred young, sensitive Irish lads going into all political parties now, so that in 10 years you have in all political parties in Ireland. It doesn't matter how left-wing they are now, it doesn't matter how anti-Irish they are now. If you go in now, and then you will have across the board young men, or yeah, by then a bit older men, fully loyal to Ireland, yeah, then you can create change. But right now it doesn't matter in the least how much you protest, because the politicians who, they have a different moral framework, they have a different worldview, they, they will ignore you. They couldn't care less, as long as you don't compete with them in the institutions of power. They're not going to be afraid. They're not going to be afraid of, you know, some, some violence in the street or some protests. It doesn't matter. They are afraid when you actually start competing with them in these institutions of power. We can look at academia for something else. Look in the US, if you're a normal white guy, they put a stop to you at the door because they understand that the college, university, these provide you with a path to power. If you get into a prestigious college in the US, yeah, then you will be set up, then you will embark upon the path to power. So they want to stop you there. So therefore you have discrimination against white men in the US. They don't want you to get to these positions of power. Now something else I thought to mention when we're talking about solutions to the situation we find ourselves in. You might have heard both from you know, dissident voices and also from the establishment saying have more children. You don't have any children so therefore we need to import all of these individuals from the third world. Now of course this is only an excuse but they say it. So the counter to that is to say that you know white individuals, white men and women, they don't have children because they don't thrive particularly well in a multicultural society where you need to pay your hard-earned money in taxes to fund your own replacement. So and then you have dissident voices saying to have more children. You know, you want to save European civilization, have a lot of children. Okay, so what you're saying is basically that your children will take care of the struggle. We don't have the time for that. We have about maybe 20 years, give or take, 20 years in Sweden, 20 years in Ireland, perhaps a bit less in France, perhaps a bit less in the UK. It, does, it depends, of course, it's hard to say, but we don't have the time to let the struggle fall upon the shoulders of our children. Now, don't get me wrong, I do want you to have children because it's great. It's great for your own well-being, for your happiness, for your legacy. You will be able to get so much love. You will be able to give so much love. This is a different topic. I do want you to have children, but don't think for a second it has anything to do with politics. It's not a political act to have children. That's a degenerate view of children. Having children that's a blessing from the divine which you should cherish, you should not view it as a as a political act. It's absurd to think that way. And also, yeah, you can have how many children you want, but if they grow up in an anti-white society, yeah, it, you will set them up for a very dark life. So if we want the best for our children, and I'm speaking now to all fellow fathers as well, think about what sort of society you want for your children. Right now there is only darkness unless we can change things, unless we can get our guys into positions of power so we can start the great re-migration process, so we can have, you know, the, the luxury of not having to escort them everywhere again, which we had back in the day. Now, since I am a venerable ancient now, I might say the following, that your worldview, it looks quite different when you are 25 and when you're 35. So I understand what it's like to be in your 20s, you want to be a bit cool, you want to be a bit rebellious, you want to be a bit edgy, but if you are mature enough, and I can only hope that you are, then you understand that it doesn't matter how cool or edgy you are. The, the cool thing to do, the right thing to do, is to put a suit on and be as presentable as possible, be as sharp as possible, start competing for these positions of power. And yeah, you will have to suffer through, again, these boring political meetings, but it's for the greater good. So if you think it's uh, not super exciting, then remember that this is the path you have to take. It's not maybe as spectacular as some other paths, but it is what it is. You simply have to do it. You have to do it if you're serious about restoring order to the West. Now you might ask, why do I regret myself so much? What is my great shame? Yeah, it's because I should have known earlier. I should have said this earlier. I should have, instead of focusing on getting guys to go into the gym, again, you can be, you can have the best physique in the world. You can be the strongest guy in the world. You can be the best fighter in the world. was an eagle, a divine sign for sure. You can be the best fighter you want. Sometimes I have 
you know, thought about what would it have been if I had pursued a career in MMA, something like that. And then I realized it doesn't matter how hard I can hit with the world breaker here. What matters is how sharp my pen is, how well I can communicate our ideas. That is the greatest glory. That is the real fight. The real fight is not something you do outside of that. There is only one struggle that matters. There is only one real fight and that takes place in the institutions of power. I will keep doing the metapolitical work. I'm extremely proud of the work I've done. I'm extremely proud of all of the achievements, all of the medals and trophies I have in my metaphysical palace and what I mean with that is all of the hits I've taken over all of these years, hit pieces and you know financial hits and everything like that. This is something I'm willing to keep doing as long as we have young guys who go on the inside of things to get to the positions of power. Now we're not only talking about politics, we can talk about I had a supporter, a tech guy, who asked, what, what do you want me to do? How can I help the great cause? Should I try to start something by myself or what should I do? And I said to him, you know, try to go into Meta or something. And Meta is a company that has traumatized me. And I don't even use that term jokingly. I say that, yeah, Meta as a company, they've put me through quite a bit of torment over all of these years. Even so, I understand that Meta as a, as a company isn't evil. The guys, or perhaps rather girls, in these positions, they are the bad ones. So if we can get our guys in these positions instead, yeah, then we can even have freedom of speech in, in Meta. How about that freedom of speech on Instagram? Would be cool. Maybe I can even get my accounts back. Maybe I can even have a Legio Glory account there again. So the point is that instead of stepping outside of society, try to engage in society, with society. Same thing if we're talking about the law system. I would rather have our guys in these positions. So all over the board, in as many institutions as possible. Same thing with the police. I want our guys there. Same thing in the military. I want our guys. And you can also look at this. The police in Sweden, for example, or the military, they will screen very hard. They will screen to see, are these guys, is this potential recruit, does he have any sort of right-leaning opinion? If they detect that you have, they will put a stop to it. So be disciplined, don't talk about your views publicly. Now, of course, you might be in a position where you don't have any aspiration uh, to go into these positions. Then you can talk as openly as possible. But if you are, if you have a shot, if you're a younger guy, I ask you, I've taken all of this, I've taken all of this heat over all of these years, so I will humbly request the following. I will humbly ask you the following, that keep your discipline, don't speak your mind, Keep it within yourself and be in a position where you can embark upon the path to power. That is the solution to our predicament. Now then you might ask, how will I redeem my great failure? How will I redeem my great failure that I haven't said, that I haven't done this video before, that I haven't pushed this hard enough for long enough? Yeah, I can only, I can only try to be better in the future. I can only try to get better try to become better as a voice for European civilization. For reason, for justice, I will keep pushing this, I will keep giving this recommendation for young guys to go in to party politics. And again, I understand it's more fun to get all of the glory by being a public dissident and uh, doing your own thing, but I'm asking you if you're serious about wanting to save European civilization, then you need to suffer through this boring political meetings and it will feel like nothing is ever happening and it will feel like you're not doing anything because it's a it's not particularly spectacular it's more fun to fantasize about a violent revolution i've been 25 too i know it's a completely different thing but yeah when you're 35 and you start seeing things a bit more seriously it will be a different thing so i'm just saying this from a position of enlightenment as I've reached now that do go in to these political parties and you don't need to agree with them you only need to be there for the position of power and then you can start pushing for re-migration so we can get our countries back that is what it's all about and then of course on a personal note I will keep pushing the metapolitical I will keep re-sculpting the metapolitical landscape I will restructure the moral framework so restructuring it from you know, saying that the best you can do is to take care of, to import the entire third world to take care of them because white people are so bad. This is how the moral framework looked. Now I'm re-sculpting it to say that the most moral thing you can do is to create a safe society for our children. This is the highest, this is the most moral. So I'll keep pushing the metapolitical, I will keep doing it, I have plenty of energy. Believe you me, I've unlocked the inexhaustible energy of the Normans, so I will keep going. And, and, and yeah, I don't mind taking the heat. I take the heat so you don't have to, as long as you go in 
on the inside work your way up and uh, get to these positions of power so you can actually implement change. This is the only path forward. And also since we are 10 years anniversary I would like to give um, straight from my heart a thank you to everyone who's believed in me, to everyone who supported me over all of these years. And uh, yeah, again I'm not trying to be humble, I am still proud of the work I've done. I'm a bit ashamed also that I missed this fundamental part, the best recommendation possible. Uh, but it is what it is. We, we simply have to keep it in mind going forward and give this recommendation. Now I will also say something about the situation in Sweden so you understand the difference in um, how you approach the situation. Back in the 90s, early 2000s, Sweden had a large, vigorous nationalist movement who was very active on the streets. But what did it lead to? Absolutely nothing at all, because they didn't have any institutional power. Now, I don't blame these young Swedish men. I was too young at the time, of course, so I wasn't part of any of that. I don't blame them. They didn't know what to do. But it didn't work, at least, to, to own the streets, to go on street protests. And I'm not, I'm not saying that it's bad to protest. I'm not saying that at all. Do it if you want, but the real fight, the real path to power is inside of the political game. And now we have the Sweden Democrats, second largest party, per the latest election. That is, the, that is what made them truly afraid, these individuals in the regime. And now I will say the following, that it, they could do it then, back in the 90s, the Sweden Democrats, they created a new party. Now we should not create any new parties, we should go into already existing parties and form them in accord with what is right and reasonable. So anyway, that was my confession, that was my rant for the day. Again, thank you all so much for your support and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. XXO. Boom!